Okay guys, good afternoon. This is Paul P of Always Good Tom Never Busog. I'm here in Greenbelt. I'm going to check out this one restaurant that serves kind of this Filipino style food. Now, <laughs> I was in Canada for Christmas. So that means I wasn't able to eat we call this specialty foods for Christmas. Specifically, kakanens. One of which is bibingka and the other one is Putabongbong. They are mostly sold for Simbang Gabi or Midnight Mass during the month of December or sometimes in Advent. Okay? Then I found this place, it's called Via Mare, and they sell Putabongbong and Bibingka all year long. So I'm gonna have my fill of this awesome, awesome Filipino desserts. So, tara, kain tayo. See ya! Okay guys, welcome to Via Mare. This is Paul P. Um, Via Mare is a restaurant here in Manila. You can actually find them in several places. There's one in Rockwell, there's one here in Greenbelt, there's one another one in Greenbelt 1, and they have one in Landmark. Yeah, I believe Landmark. But the main one, I believe, is in Landmark 2. But I'm here in Greenbelt 3 because I feel more at home here, and my mom chose this place. So. We're going to order a few items here that are uniquely Filipino and what you call this, more of a kakanin style or merienda style food. Okay, so I'll continue when the food gets here. Okay guys, um, the food has arrived at class and here's what I ordered. I have sago, no gulaman, just sago. It's a drink which uses a bit of vanilla and brown sugar. It's basically a pampalamig because it's really hot these days. We have puto bumbung, which is glutinous rice with panocha. Panocha is basically like hard coconut sugar and it's served with grated coconut. And we have their pancit palabo. Pancit palabo is rice noodles served with a shrimp type sauce topped with shrimps, chicharron, and eggs, hard boiled eggs. And then we have this. This is bibinka. Bibinka is a rice flour mix. And basically it's a rice cake. A giant fluffy rice cake. Rice pancake. It's actually baked by uh, charcoal topped with salted egg and white cheese, Filipino white cheese. We have palitao, which is rice dough boiled, served with desiccated coconut and sugar with toasted sesame seeds. This is the last dish for the desserts, which is a cassava bibinka, grated cassava baked and topped with a creamy sauce. Last dish, we have lugao toppings. It's basically a rice porridge, also known as like congee. It starts with adobo flakes, pickled pig's ears, salted egg, fried tofu, and pinsek frito or deep fried wontons, and with chives and toasted garlic. So, we'll start off with the pancit. Bon appetit, guys. Okay guys, for our first dish, we have our pancit. It is rice noodles. This is pancit palabo. They use rice noodles and they make this sauce of... It's orange sauce because it is basically shrimp, ground up shrimp, tossed with a, with a bit of cornstarch and then colored with atuete seeds. Atuete is anato seeds. Okay? Then it's topped with shrimps chicharron, hard-boiled eggs, and look at that. They have chives and they have a bit of pork in it. See? Oh, there's also squid. So, I won't mix it all because I just want to get a bite of everything. Look at that. I got a bit of the chicharron. I got a bit of the squid, I got a bit of the shrimp, and some of the sauce. Okay. The 
the pancit is good. There is a certain seafood taste because of the shrimp. But the thing is, the shrimps are fresh. So, flavor is really good. The chicharron is still crunchy. They're, the noodles are... How do you call it? It's not al dente. There's no al dente in Tagalog. So, technically it's al dente. But if you mix it all together, and if it needs to be a bit more flavorful, add a bit of calamansi. But for me, this is perfect already as it is. So, we'll go to the next dish because this is actually my mom's order. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, this is my order. This is the Lugao toppings. You can see there is... This is also known as adobo sulipan or flake. Salty garlic pork. We have pickled pig's ears. Salted egg. Pinset frito or deep fried wontons. We have deep fried tofu. Toasted garlic and chives. So we'll try we'll try my I'll try my best to just try the rice porridge alone. Okay. The rice porridge is not too salty, it's really gingery. I know it's a Thursday and I'm not allowed to eat rice but for this one I'll eat rice, okay? So really flavorful. Uh, there's a bit of a chicken based broth to it. Now I will try it with a uh, with the uh, toasted adobo. The saltiness of the adobo complements the porridge. It's really salty, but it's still good. We'll try some of the pickled pig's ears. This is a challenge to put on her spoon. There it is. <laughs> See that? Okay. The pickled pig's ears are very tender. That means it's been braised for a long time. And I think that would be my favorite now. It's really garlicky. And it has a somewhat like a CC kind of taste. It might be a CC. Okay. So now we'll try the salted egg and some of the porridge. Salted egg, guys. Okay. The egg yolk is kind of grainy, but the contrast of the texture of the salted egg yolk and the smooth porridge is really nice. Now we'll try the healthiest one here, which is the deep fried tofu. Look at that. Okay, the deep fried tofu is crispy on the outside, smooth in the middle, it's a bit, it, uh, it really goes well with the rice porridge. Now, we will get one of the wontons, or the, yeah, deep fried wonton. Okay, the wrapper is really crunchy. It's a bit... The meat's a bit tough. But all in all, I still prefer the pig's ears. We'll try it now with some chives and garlic. I believe this is the best complimentary. This is the best toppings for any lugao. This is what's called an SOP in any lugao one. It's garlic and chives.
Now that reminds me of high school days when I used to eat gogao in school. So I will continue with the other dishes and I'll get back to you later. This is my drink of choice. It's sagot gula. Sago. Okay, it's not sagot gula, but it's sago. It is a brown sugar syrup drink with pandan flavor and it comes with tapioca balls. This is the best drink to have during the summer because it refreshes so much. That's good chocolate that's good salamat. Okay, so we'll move on to our next dish. Okay guys, our next dish is palitao. Palitao is rice flour pounded with water and then it's like mochi, Japanese mochi. But this time we raw rice flour, we mix it with water and we make it into round shapes and we drop it in water. Now, when it's cooked, it will float. That's why it's called palitao. Litao in Tagalog or Filipino means to float or to show up. So, this is palitao. It comes with desiccated coconut and toasted sesame seeds with sugar. So, we will try it with this. You, look how sticky it is, guys. Why is it sticky? Because you're supposed to do it this way. It doesn't want to come off the plate. Dip one side with sugar. Okay. And then dip one side with coconut. So, we'll give it a... More sugar. More sugar. <laughs> yeah. okay. This reminds me of my childhood. We used to live in Malate when Nenong Naglalako or someone standing on the street. They would go palita, palita. This is one of the dishes. The glutinous rice is. I said sticky, I said chewy, the desiccated coconut with the toasted sesame seed sugar complements the rice flour dumpling and it tastes awesome. Okay, now here, this is what I've been looking forward to. They have this every Christmas in any church, Juni Simbanga Bit. Okay, it is puto bumbo. It's actually originally supposed to be made of uh, purple rice. Yes, purple rice. Ground up and stuffed into this tube then steamed. It gets this loopy consistency. But this time, they use flavorings and food colors to achieve that color. It's nice and purple. It's not actually made of ube. Okay. So we'll give it a try. This one is smothered in butter. After they steam it, they put it on this and they smother it in butter. They put it in panucha. Guys, panucha is where you have coconut coconut cream. You simmer that until it thickens and thickens until it solidifies. This what you call panucha. This is panucha. And that's a lot of panucha. That's good pancha. That's awesome puto bong bong. Believe it or not, I used to go to Simbanga Bay. Wake up at 4 in the morning just to go to Simbanga Bay. Then fall asleep in church and then look forward to the puto bong bong afterwards. So, sorry, that's a sin. But I love my puto bong bong. Okay, I'll move on to the next dish. 
which is another Christmas Christmas delicacy. This is bibinka. Bibinka is rice flour with egg, milk, sometimes coconut cream or coconut milk. Whisk together to a batter, and then pour it into this syrup, what do you call it? Um, terracotta bowl with banana leaf at the bottom. See, there's banana leaf at the bottom. Put it in that. We did use parchment paper before. We used banana leaves before. Put that. They pour it in. Then you put it on top of this charcoal burner style thing. It's basically baking it. We have used it outdoors, so use charcoal at the bottom, then charcoal on top. So you get this uh, really toasted top and moist in the middle. Okay. Once again, this is a bit special. They use white cheese or queso pote and salted egg on it. And once again, it is served with desiccated coconut. And this one is smothered in butter. Okay. We look in the middle, guys. Okay. Let me get a knife. in the middle there's pieces of there's pieces of white cheese in the middle and the fluffy rice flour batter and toast it on top okay. you're supposed to eat this with the desiccated coconut but I'm not a fan so I'll just get a bit of it and give this one a try The contrasting flavors of sweet, salty, a bit of the, the cool taste of the coconut really makes this dish one of the best things to eat for Christmas. You can see guys, we have nature's non-stick coating or parchment paper. Thank you, banana leaf. <laughs> nice and toasted at the bottom, nice and toasted on top. With a lot of salted egg. Mm. Okay. I'll continue eating this and I'm going for the next dish. Okay. Okay guys, our next dish is is cassava bibinka. It's different from that kind of bibinka because it uses yuca. Yuca is a root crop wherein you have to grate it, squeeze all the juices out, and then mix it with condensed milk, a bit of egg, and then you put it in a pan, you bake it, then once it's almost done baking, you add a layer of coconut cream, which makes this creamy sauce on top. See that? It, it's like lape. So we'll give this one a try. Okay. Scratch the puto bong bong. Scratch the binga. This is my new favorite. The latek is so sweet, plus the sweetness of the cassava cake, or the cassava bibinka. I'm going for a second bite, sorry. I'm really going for a second bite. And once again, there is the banana leaf, which is our non-stick Filipino style. You can actually see some of the fibers of the cassava. See that? Okay, I'm going to finish my meal and then I'm going to give you the review of the restaurant later. Okay, see ya. Okay, guys, um, 
Okay guys, this is Paul P of Always Become Never Resolved. I'm here for the review of the Amare Oyster Bar. It's Oyster Bar but I didn't get any oysters. He said I got a lot of desserts. Okay? So here's my review. We'll base it on the five criteria, which is service, ambiance, food, location, and last but not least, price. Okay? We we'll start with the ambiance. The ambiance of the restaurant is awesome. It's not too crowded, not too cramped. Downside here is it's not horizontally and down friendly most of the seats, except for the the one against the wall. We have a very awesome music, and it's not that noisy. It's not that quiet too. Okay. Now we will talk about next one is service. The waiters are very helpful they brought me everything I needed instantly and they served and they knew the menu really really well and they taught me they told me some of the items here are only found here in Via Mare so thank you guys we'll talk about location location it is found here in Greenbelt 3 inside the mall it's actually near the park near the church so it's accessible for everybody via Grab, Uber, or any commute. You just have to enter through the mall. And it's actually easy to find. Now, we'll talk about the food. The food was spectacular. Okay? Everything was brought to me and still warm. Except for the drink. <laughs> My favorite has to be the cassava. That cassava blew me away. I was not expecting it to be that good. I thought the best one here would be the puto bong bong, which is what I was looking forward to. But the cassava blew me away. Okay. Now we'll talk about the price. All in all, I spent a little bit under a thousand pesos for everything here. So that's six dishes under a thousand pesos. Where can you go wrong with that? Okay. So all in all, I give it 5 out of 5 always good on points and this place is a really really nice place to eat when you want a taste of Filipino delicacies. Okay? So this is Poppy of Always Good Time Never Goes Out. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Paul Always Good Time. And Facebook at Always Good Tom Never Busog and on Instagram at Paul Always Good Tom Never Busog. So, one more thing food always tastes better when enjoyed with the ones you love. Okay? So, till next time, see ya! Tara, kain tayo!